Hey, and welcome to The Drive. We are back after a week off because everyone was talking debt limit last week. We thought we would take a little time and step back from what's going on with the Republican presidential candidates, but that's finally over. I had a little spring in my step this morning about that, and uh, now we're back to talking about our candidates. As you can see, we have them all on a board here, ranging from uh, Newt Gingrich, who's at the back of the pack, uh, all the way up to Mitt Romney at the front. Uh, I want to start by talking about a guy who's right behind Mitt Romney, and that would be Rick Perry, the Texas governor. Now, Perry is holding this event on Saturday called The Response. And what's so interesting about this is it's basically a evangelical revival in a lot of ways. Uh, president Bush, who Perry is often compared to because they're both Texas governors, uh, was seen as this very religious president. But frankly, uh, Rick Perry makes George W. Bush look like uh, an atheist because uh, he is so out there. He is, he, he, he is unapologetic. Bush would use these coded messages. Uh, Perry, by contrast, uh, doesn't, doesn't code it at all. He's very explicit about it. And while that'll help him in a place like Iowa, I think it could hurt him uh, with the electorate sort of more broadly. So I'm actually going to move him back. We have him uh, on our board right behind uh, Mitt Romney. I'm going to move him back a little bit because I think this event could actually come back to hurt him. So we had him on the 25. He's back to the 20. And of course, these candidates are all trying to get to the end zone. Uh, next, I want to talk about Mitt Romney, our front runner. You see him right here. Uh, now, Romney spent all, uh, the last couple weeks really lying low. This big fight was happening over the debt limit. Where was Mitt Romney? Nowhere to be seen. He wasn't taking positions. He eventually uh, released sort of an afterthought statement opposing the compromise deal that came out. But he took some criticism uh, from people saying that, you know, why aren't you a leader on this? You want to lead the country. Why can't you take sort of a more forceful position? Now, there were some polit political reasons for him not to do it. And I think it reflects the fact that he's running a very cautious front runner type campaign. Uh, so let's go back to the board. Now, a lot of folks would say, OK, Mitt Romney, because of his sort of lack of action here should be moving back to like the 20 as well but you know frankly I'm not gonna do that I'm gonna I'm gonna keep him right here and that's because I just don't think voters are gonna be voting based on this inside the beltway it may be raised some eyebrows but nobody's gonna be voting on when you took a position on the debt limit so um, we're gonna leave him there now let's talk about the rest of our candidates we've got Tim Pawlenty up here not much going on with him but next week for him is crucial it's the Iowa straw poll it's really make or break for him so keep an eye on that and I'm gonna be there uh, checking out how things are going Michelle Bachman, also in our second tier here, she's on about the 15. She's been really aggressive on the debt limit stuff, and it's a good issue for her because she can say, I'm not going to raise the debt limit. She's running a very different type of campaign than Romney. It's much more sort of focused on the primary, whereas Romney is focused on the general. Uh, she has had a good week, I think. This issue has been good for her. She's running a lot of ads on it in Iowa. So we're going to move her up a little bit, uh, put her right about there, say on the 18. Next week's also crucial for her. Let's talk quickly about the rest of the field. Not a lot going on with John Huntsman. We're going to leave him where he is. Uh, and then we've got our sort of four uh, characters back here towards the back. Rick Santorum, not much going on. Sarah Palin continues to sort of hang out. She said uh, that President Obama, she brought up her palling around with terrorist line about President Obama uh, this week. But again, Palin just really seems like a sideshow to me at this point. She's controversial even to Republicans, and I just don't see her as a viable candidate. So we're keeping her here, uh, here, her here back uh, with some of these other folks. Herman Cain, he could get a boost out of Iowa next week, but he continues to sort of lag behind. Uh, Ron Paul continues to have very passionate but limited support, so he stays here. And then perhaps I'm being a little cruel, but I have Newt Gingrich all the way in the wrong end zone because his campaign has been such a disaster. My editor has been saying, look, you should at least put him on the one yard line. So look, all right, all right, Kevin Hedgecoff. He's on the one yard line. Um, so we put Newt there, um, but that's our board. That's where things stand. Now, next week is going to be crazy because we have this Iowa straw poll going on, and it means a lot for the candidates. There's also a debate next week. So it's about to get really exciting, and we're going to be here with you on the drive, taking you through everything that happens. So be sure to check in next time. I'm Brian Montopoli, CBS News. Thank you for being with us.